Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and this is a fake nose ring. And it's tickling the hell out of my nose right now. But it is stopping me from doing my usual wiggling the end of my nose. So hopefully my foundation will actually last beyond three hours. Because that has turned into a nervous habit from the ridiculous hay fever I had last year. It's now become a nervous habit. So, deep joy. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about though. What I'm talking about today is this teeny weeny little palette. This is the I Heart Revolution Black Pearl. Yes, it sounds like a pirate ship. Actually, it'd probably be very good for doing pirate themed makeup. Maybe that's why they called it that. Who knows? Uh, what I do know is that this film involves me putting this on these, blathering on about many kinds of things, as always, and coming up with a conclusion as to whether I recommend it or not. So if that sounds like the kind of thing that you might be interested in watching, then my friends, as I have said for some considerable time, oft here echoed elsewhere on less imaginative channels. But now say it accompanied by Sammy the Sloth Straw. Losing the plot already. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. It is barely even half past seven in the morning, and I need the fan on already because it's already a hot day. Deep joy. Um, I will have shown you this in the intro. This is the I Heart Revolution Black Pearl palette. It's one of their mini chocolate bar palettes and it looks like that. Now I was inspired to pick this up after watching Angelica Lirma's film with it. Because I thought it was super cute and I wanted to see whether Especially given the fact that I'm not going to be using Jeffrey's stuff on screen and necessarily telling you I'm using Jeffrey's stuff on screen. Can you get a look from this comparable to the look you could get from the cremated palette? Because this has got those kind of weird undertones. Um, it hasn't got the green based undertones, but it has certainly got the brown undertones, the mauvey undertones, this one here, this silver has got a bit of a mauve kick to it, or a lilac kick to it. So I just thought it would be interesting to see what look you can get from this mini palette, because with these being in the plastic, and so small, they are fab to travel with when we get to the stage we can travel again. Or like, you know, if I'm going to be staying overnight at the mother-in-law's, for example, I'll throw this in or I'll throw in, you know, one of the little elf quads. Um, because they're easy to travel with, but you still have choice. So that's the plan for today. I'm going to do a look with this, see what it's like. Um, this remains a teaching channel, as such, that combined with my chronic pain means that I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. Um, I zoom right in tight to my eyes so you can see exactly what's going on, even if you're on your phone, um, and I don't speed up or skip any of the blending of the eyeshadow. Um, if this means my film is going too slowly for you, YouTube has a speed widget and unless you're streaming me through your TV feel free to use it and speed me up. 
I'll probably sound like a chipmunk, but hey, if that makes you smile this morning. Mm -hmm. um, as part of my uh, teaching element of my channel, um, <clears throat> I have deep set eyes, which for a long time I thought were hooded because the way that eyeshadow wears through the day on hooded and on deep set eyes are very similar but the actual application method for each eye type is different and it was during a pain somnia moment when I was researching that I actually realised I have deep set eyes not hooded since that point in time I have included a clip where I talk you through the differences between deep set and hooded lids and the workarounds for each eye type. So, I'm going to insert that clip now. Remember, it's going to be very up close and personal, just my eyes on screen. And I will see you at the other end of it to apply some of this to my eyelids. Here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't use any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me 
the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, and I am back. Right, I'm using one of my AliExpress Ranimore brushes. Um, it's one of the ones that I've got linked in my um, which brushes do I recommend film, which I think I've got linked in the description box. Uh, but this is basically a blending brush. It is clean, it's just stained. Right, um, these do not have names they just have numbers and really helpfully look how that is printed on there i am 40 bloody six years old do you really think i can read that but that will tell you which ones of these are pressed pigments i personally haven't got a scooby because it's bloody magnifying glass to read it okay i'm gonna go in with this shade to start with, this very cool toned, to me this is what a taupe actually looks like, uh, so I'm going to go in with that. Mm, reasonable amount of kick up in the pan, that's fine, I just focus, thank you, do your job, there you go. I just leave the kick up in the pan like that and then pick it up next time round. Now, I always hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure as possible on my eyelids and we're going to start with the Viennese Waltz of Blending which is natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there and reverse turns to come back again. I think you're a wee bit close, let's zoom you out fractionally. There we go, you can see both my eyes at the same time, isn't that nice? Um, the reason we do the Viennese Waltz Blend rather than the Windscreen Wiper, which you will see younger gurus do, I'm 46 years old. I've lost over 14 stone, that's over £200. This side was pulled around significantly as a five-year-old, and you can see the creasing. Oh, my primer on a bit thick today. You can see the creasing on the inner corner of this eye which I don't have on this one. So the skin on my eyelids moves, but I know teenagers who have always been slim that have very mobile eyelids. And by doing the Viennese Waltz of Blending, we are gently moving the skin of the eye around to make sure we don't get that giveaway tiger stripe or pin coding, bar coding type thing. I always start at the outside edge, because if you do happen to deposit too much pigment, it's much easier to blend it out when your nose isn't in the way. Okay. I'm going to start just above what my natural crease is. And just slowly blend that across. And as I said, I would much rather build a pigment up than put too much on. But you can see, I mean, I, I, you, you heard how well I tapped off, and yet I have not dipped back into the palette. But look at that pigment that you've just got. When Revolution do their palettes well, they do them very well. I'm just going to pick up a little bit extra and... Just bring that down a fraction. I 
I may take this bit higher up the eye actually. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, well, I hope tomorrow's a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, hello, good morning, I hope you have a good day. So you can see, that was, what, two dips, three dips into the pan? And look at that, that has just blended out so nicely. And I've just picked up some more pigment now and yet you can see there's still that much left over from my first dip. So this would appear to be one of the palettes that Revolution have done well. Well, this shade anyway. Um, the reason that I do one eye and then the other eye is because your eyes are not symmetrical, they are different. Unless you are a certain Jimmy Chuck and you Photoshop them and tweak them until they become something that is damn near impossible for the average person to recreate. That's not how this channel works. The only when I put pictures up, the only adjustments I make are to the brightness and the contrast to make sure that the colours are reproduced accurately if the lighting is a bit weird because I rely an, a lot on natural lighting and then I have um, a couple of LED lights behind the camera but there are times when if it's particularly overcast outside, for example, the colours can pull a bit darker than they actually are. So then I'll play with the, the brightness. But I, I've got to be honest, I don't know how to use Photoshop, face tune, all this nonsense. Um, but the reason that I do this eye and then the other eye is because I like to sit back and relax my brows and make sure I've got the same shape. You can see this one is sort of straight with a curve at the end. This one's gone straight all the way along. So I, I can see I need to bring this middle bit up a little bit here, which I wouldn't necessarily be able to spot if I'd done, particularly if it was further down the eye, if I'd then put all the additional colours on top. Um, but yeah, the only other time that I'll have a filter or something on the picture is if I send it black and white or if it's a very, very obvious Snapchat filter. But when I do put Snapchat filtered fil um, photos up, I always make sure there are natural photos so that you can actually see the result that I had got. Hmm. And you can see from that first dip I have still got pigment in the pan. So that shows you the level of pigmentation in this palette. Dip in gently, ladies and gents, dip in gently. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth. Uh, I used to use colour switches, but they are way too harsh on your brushes, um, especially natural hair brushes. I mean, these are th synthetic, but yeah, I, I don't like colour switches. Um, you can use a microfiber cloth, you can use a face cloth like I am, or an old towel or anything really, even a bit of kitchen roll. Right, I'm going to go down to a more tapered blending brush. Remember, whatever the width of the head of the brush, that's how far it's going to blend the colour out to. And then I'm going to come into... Well, actually, this one has got a bit of a greeny undertone to it. I might go into this one. You don't really notice it until you see it on the camera that these two have got a bit of a green undertone to them. 
that's interesting because looking at them in daylight they just look like charcoal hmm. so I'm going to go into that one that's got a bit of a greeny undertone to it tap off well as you can see really glad I showed you that on screen now and I'm going to start deepening through the crease if you've moved your crease now is the point to follow the new crease that you've created because darker colours go backwards and lighter colours come forwards so by deepening through the crease we're adding more definition to the eye and if you have had to create a new crease this will help in terms of continuing the illusion that this part of the eye goes further back. I'm just going to bring that down just onto the mobile lid a fraction. Just to deepen up the outer corner there. Half seven and I'm doing a smoky eye. <laughs> Guess I'm going a wee bit dramatic today then. So again you can tilt your head back to make sure you're getting to the edges to blend them. Obviously with the other eye I can close the eye, but as I'm blinding that one, if I close this eye, I'm not going to see much of what's going on. Right, can you see the difference that has made in terms of definition to the eye? So now I'm going to repeat that on this side. Now this side I do have to deal with slightly differently because of those deep creases because um, I always get more fallout this side because the eye was mucked around with when I was like you know five six years old and as such is looser than the skin on the other eye. I also have the issue here with these deep creases. Can you see that tiger striping? The circular thing just doesn't work. I'm not worried at the moment because I'm going to go over that in a minute with a shimmer, but I do have to stretch my lid out slightly, which is something that I always tell you not to do. However, I have found with experience with this eye, if I don't do that the pigment builds up in that crease and then throughout the day ends up um, cascading down into my eye and down my face and it's actually quite painful so just building this colour up here If you get a patch like that, where it's being stubborn, which I do get because I've got very, very dry patches here and here. Once you've got all your blending done and you're happy, pick up the tiniest little bit of pigment on the brush and pat to blend rather than doing the circular. Just gently and lightly pat the pigment on cover the area where it's being defiant. We will not have defiant makeup. It is not acceptable. <coughs> I am losing the plot folks, it's too hot already, too hot.
I'm hopefully going to get a Hell Yeah Why No filmed today. If it stays reasonably cool. Right, I've got my... Actually, this is iHeart Rev as well. This is the Cucumber Fixing Spray. Um, I use this to wet the... Is only going to come out? I use this to wet the pigment on the brush after I've applied it because obviously you never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. So, this has three shimmers. The green one, the white one and the lilac-y grey one. So I think I'm going to start off with the bright silver one. I'm just going in with a very, very tiny... Um, it was sold as a packing brush, but I think it's more of a, a lip brush, to be honest. Right, now, the ferrule is wet, that's this bit. So tuck it into your knuckles and spin, because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening the bristles, because then you won't have a brush, you'll have a stick. I'm going to start off right in this corner with this beautiful bright silver. Oh, and it is a beautiful bright silver, look at that. And just bring that out to roughly the edge of my iris. Dry the brush. Go back in. Reload the brush with pigment. This is one of these pigments that instantly goes to hard pan. I think you can see that there. There, there we go. So. But I've just gone over the hard pan and you can still pick pigment up from it. So it's obviously just got a very high oil content to it. Again, dry the ferrule off. So I've just got an eyelash I need to deal with. And no, I haven't been to the nail salon, these are stick-ons. Because unfortunately my nail salon that has reopened now, but they've got very strict guidelines about not having anybody else with you. And with me being disabled, I need Chris there physically and emotionally, so... Right, what I have to do now is very gently stretch this lid because, as I said before, if I don't, it won't be blended onto the lid like this, it'll just pack loosely into the crease. But you can see I'm only pulling it out far enough to straighten the creasing and then I'm gently letting go instantly. Clean the brush. Now I'm going to go into this green one here, which still looks grey when I look at it in in real life. Weird. Oh, this is a super super chunky one. Look at that. See that one. Definitely going to spray this one to try and minimise the fallout. Again, dry the ferrule off. And apply this to the remainder of the mobile lid that so far hasn't been blessed with pigment.
and then use the very tip of the bristles just to blend it into that matte shade on the outer edge there. Dry the brush off. Go back in and restack the brush to do the other eye. And again, add the pigment, just dragging the silver across onto the, the green a bit, just like I've done over here. And then tip of the bristles to buff it into the edge there. That is super pretty. Okay, I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some base products on. And pray they'll stay on long enough. And then I'll be back to finish this eye look off for you, my darlings. It will be absolutely instant. And I am back. And yes, I risked doing a wing today. I have got a separate mini tutorial on how to do wings for you. Okay, going in with my flat topped brush back into that deeper greeny grey that I used up above and I'm going to run that along the lower lash line. Now long term viewers will know that I can't actually put anything in my waterline because I've always had very watery eyes. Add to that my fibro makes them water. Add to that hay fever if I put something in my waterline, we're looking at Niagara Falls. Sometimes even just doing this can irritate my eye. So, very carefully. Obviously, if you can put something in your waterline, then rock on. <laughs> Sadly, I can't. Okay, this is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it, it's flat topped and chunky. Great for getting under the lashes to blur out, but you can use a smudger brush, you can use a thick pencil brush, um, you can even use like a dense blender or again something like this, just to smudge the lower lash line. And I'm gonna go into, this is one that I used on the on the upper lid, I'm going to go into this one, which is the same undertone as that, but just a fraction deeper. Tap off well, because obviously I don't want to fall out at this point. And then just gently buff that along the lower lash line to soften the effect. And just give a nice little smoky finish. Somebody stopping. To the lower lash line. That is so pretty. Okay, I'm going to grab my Kaleidos Moon Cruiser highlighter, which is the sort of blue to pink. There you go, look, blue to pink. Hopefully, you can 
and caught that shift. And I'm just going to pop this just up under the tail of the brow. Because apparently along with everything else, gravity affects our brows. Right. And then in a corner, and I like to bring mine around underneath the tear duct and just blend it in with the colours that I've run underneath. For me, it just finishes my eye look off, especially where I can't put anything in the actual waterline itself. But you don't have to do that, you can just do your in a corner if you want. Alrighty, I'm going to pause you one last time my lovelies, uh, I'll chuck some more of this highlight on, some mascara, a lippy, and I'll be back with my finished look and first impression thoughts on this little mini palette. For you, again, instant. I am back. Just checking for lipstick on my teeth. This is fake. I'm trying to see if I can get used to a fake one before getting the actual one done. So I do this a lot. <laughs> Which is annoying because it ends up rubbing up or rubbing off all of my foundation. And I think it's a nervous tick that I've got into. So I'm gonna see if Having one of these here will stop me from doing that, and if it does, as soon as we can get facial piercings done again, I shall get mine done. But this is about this, not this, I just mentioned it because I know regular viewers will be, hang on a minute. <laughs> Plus, observant viewers will be like, you didn't have that at the start of it, what's going on? So, Revolution Black Pearl. Do I like it? Yeah, I really do. Um, I've used what? One, two, three. If you include the colour that I used on my brows, I've used four of the mattes and two of the shimmers. Um, and I really like it so far. It has really good pigmentation, blended super easily, and you know, minimal fallout which is surprising for darker shadows because normally the black and the grey based shadows tend to have more, I don't know what it is about it, whether it's the type of pigments that are used to create those colours but normally you'll see a lot more fallout with those particular shades but I didn't see that with this. So, this can now be added to my list of if you want cremated but you're not supporting Jeffrey or you can't afford it. To be honest, this is what most of the looks are going to be like if you've got cremated anyway. There's a lot of repeat shades in there. There's a lot of shades which swatch differently but once you've got them on the eyes look very similar. Looking back, do I wish I'd just bought this? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> But I can definitely give this a good old fashioned thumbs up because I really like it and uh, I want to thank Angie, Angelica Lirma for using it um, and tempting me. So, um, the lippy by the way is Gerard Iced Mocha if you're wondering. The mascara is my Catrice Glamondol Volume Waterproof Mascara. And I have tempted fate and tried this white power pencil from BH Cosmetics on my waterline. But we shall see how well that lasts for. But if you are one of my regular 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you still, but they're leaving the films in your news feed 
So that it's not obvious you've been lopped off the list. Once you've done that, cheek a little like, a bit of a comment, maybe even a share would be really lovely to help me try and beat this YouTube algorithm so that more people can enjoy the channel because I think most of you do enjoy listening to me blither on. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you've made it this far through there must be something that appealed to you, even if it is just my dulcet tones first thing in the morning or whenever it is that you're watching me. It'd be lovely to welcome you into the 4F family. Super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button, turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications. And yes. And keep doing that until YouTube stop asking you the same damn question in 16 different ways. It's weird. Sometimes they ask me once. Sometimes they ask me six times when I subscribe to a channel. Um, but hopefully you'll get notified of my films going up. Uh, I say that, but my husband is subscribed to me and he gets about one in four. And some of those are about a month late, so... Yeah, uh, you may want to just have a look through the playlists and check out some of the other films. I've got, I've got an awful lot you can choose from product reviews and makeup tutorials like this, I've got collabs, I've got challenges, I've got tag films, um, a couple of series that I've started on my channel, the Zodiac series and the Pix series. Um, I even read you my favourite poem. And there's one that talks you to sleep if you're an insomniac, which I'm told works remarkably well. So uh, if you're looking for some me time, basically, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist and indulge, my darlings. And now, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.